Hi, everybody. Pastor Jason back with you once again for another Wednesday Reflection. I find myself today in the sacristy, and as we prepare for Reformation, this is kind of a Reformation Reflection for you today. Behind me, you see a picture of Martin Luther, a wonderful prayer that he has, that he wrote about how he wasn't worthy of the office to which he was called as a pastor and yet leaning on the Spirit to lead and to guide so that he would be faithful in his calling as a pastor to his people, sticking close to the Word of God and sharing it as God would want him to. I appreciate that every Sunday when I come in here and prepare for worship, I see that picture and I see that prayer. And it reminds me I'm not worthy either in and of myself, but God has chosen me <laughs> totally in his grace to, to be about his business, which is to share the love and the peace and the comfort, the conviction as well, but the gospel message of who Jesus is and what he has done. So for this week, we have familiar words for Reformation, the gospel lesson from John chapter 8. So Jesus said to the Jews who have believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. They answered, and we are offspring of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of our Lord. The people of the day, the, the Jewish people of that day, they didn't understand the freedom that Jesus was talking about. They had a wonderful lineage and they were never slaves of anyone. They were always the leaders and they were never enslaved to those around them. And so they didn't understand that when Jesus was talking about being a slave, he was talking about a slave to sin. And so he had to speak clearly what he meant since they didn't understand where he was coming from. When he talked about, if you know the truth, if you abide in God's word, then you will be set free. They thought we are following God's word. And so why would we need to be freed in the first place? So often we forget as well that we are slaves to sin. It's not a word that gets used an awful lot in our context today because it gets misunderstood. But what Jesus was talking about is something that plagues us all. A small word, sin. Mistakes, rebellion, um, the struggles we have, our anger, our pride. We could list a whole lot of things that we would label as sin. We all have them. And because of that sin, we are not able to make it to heaven. We are not able to earn our way into heaven. Jesus was reminding the Jewish leaders of that day that they're slaves to sin like all people are slaves to sin. And because of that sin, that keeps us from eternal life in and of ourselves. And yet if we abide by the word, Jesus, who is the true word, come down from heaven to free us, we know how he did that on the cross. It is finished, the empty tomb, him rising to remind us that in faith, we one day too will ra be raised with him, that they might understand all the more that they need forgiveness, they need a savior, and that indeed, even though they think their good works are just that good in and of themselves and could even save them, that they can't. And that they need something outside of themselves, more appropriately, someone outside of themselves to save them. So Jesus in this text reminds them, slaves, those who are stuck in their sins, have no place in the heavenly kingdom. For you, for me, that might sound like words that would keep us separate from God for all time. But the story doesn't end. Yes, my sin, my rebellion, my struggles, they in and of themselves do keep me from that perfect relationship with my God, with your God. And yet Jesus came. He sought us out. He lived. He died. He rose again so that we might lean on his perfection and truly be freed. As slaves of sin, we can't be free. We're bound in them. They entangle us. And yet Jesus sets all of those things free. He breaks the chains. He takes everything that entangles us and says, put it on my shoulders and I'll take it to the cross where you will know my perfect love and what I was willing to do for you. 
in that sense, you and I are perfectly free. And we can rejoice each and every day because of what Christ has done for us. Martin Luther, in his time, he struggled with sin. And he knew he was a slave to sin because he knew what it meant to, to follow the law, the law that told him he couldn't be saved. And he was so hard on himself because he didn't understand truly what the gospel was. But once he heard those words and understood the scriptures that the righteous will be saved by faith, his world opened up to the freedom that Jesus had for him. Still humble, still knowing that he sinned every day, he now placed all of them at the foot of the cross. He gave them to Jesus and trusted that Jesus had done what he said he would do. That is, give us salvation. Now, knowing the freedom that he had in Jesus, he could preach and teach and live in a different way because he had a smile on his face knowing that his heaven, the, the place where he would once be, was secure. Secure because of what Jesus had done. And abiding by his word, even when faltering and failing, being forgiven by that word, he could move forward confident in proclaiming the joy that we have in Jesus. I pray you have that same joy, that even though we make mistakes and even though we cause grief to our Lord and probably to many people around us, we can come back time and time again to the God who saves. The word that reminds us of salvation and that knowing Jesus' truth as the way, the truth, and the life, we have been freed from sin that would keep us away from God and his salvation. No longer is that our future because of what Jesus has done. So as we rejoice in a man like Martin Luther, who God chose at that time, at that place, to pronounce his gospel truth, we rejoice in this day as well as we approach this year's Reformation. And we pray, O oh Lord, continue to reform us, continue to renew us according to your word, that we might indeed follow you all the rest of our days. May that be your comfort and security this day and every day.